He was known as the Chicken Man, a nickname given to him for his skinny build. But he fought in a division with fierce competitors who boasted colorful monikers like Boom Boom, the Ringmaster, the Butterfly, and the Macho Man. So he needed a gimmick to not fade into the background. He wore trunks in a bold color for a boxer, pink, taking on the identity of a fighter that wasn't afraid to stand out. He became... Raised in Levelland, Texas, Robin Blake grew up in a family of five brothers, all of whom were encouraged by their former Marine father to be active in sports. Blake began boxing at the Levelland Boys Club at the age of seven and quickly showed promise, winning the Junior Olympics at age 15 and the Texas State Golden Gloves. He went on to compete in the 1980 Olympic trials and the now 5'11", 135-pound power-punching southpaw made it all the way to the semifinals before being eliminated by future world champion Frankie Randall. In August of 1981, Robin Blake made his professional debut with Dave Gorman's Super Pros in Fort Worth, Texas. Gorman managed the team while Joe Barrientes trained Blake. His stablemates included future world champions Donald Curry, Gene Hatcher, and Steve Cruz. Despite being a new pro, Blake was kept busy with a rigorous schedule that sometimes had him fighting twice in a month. He faced tough opponents like Primo Ramos and Chris Calvin before going up against fellow up-and-comer Ruben Munoz on national television. Keep Munoz off balance. Ruben Munoz says he is in good physical and mental shape for this fight. Blake lands a combination and a solid left hand. And a right hand. A boxer, Blake, doing the slugging of this combination. That's Rock Munoz with another solid right. Blake having his own way here in the first round. All right, Tim, now that Munoz has been tagged, he's boxing as a southpaw. It goes to show you what one big punch can do. These guys are starting to land with some heavy punches. And the fact that Blake is starting to get off first, his punches are landing a lot cleaner. And Munoz, he's able to take some of the punches because he keeps his chin down, which is very good for a puncher. Munoz. Well, how about a strategy? Is this right or, or not for him? Tim, I've, I've seen Blake in other fights where he'd get hit a couple of punches and forget all about boxing, and I've seen him get nailed, and so far, up to this fight, he's been able to take a good punch. But again, he's in with a super puncher, so who knows? Well, Ray Munoz has got to be happy that Blake is slugging with him. Oh, yes, Munoz would prefer uh, to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and punch with him because Munoz carries a very, very uh, powerful right hand. Inside, he's very effective. You see the way he goes to the body, and there... Uh, Robert Blake is able to retaliate his punches. Each has 11 knockouts. Oh, there he goes, Munoz. Right hand from Blake. Munoz up quickly, but he was really nailed. Right hand. Beautiful right hand. Stepped over and nailed him with a right hand. Blake trying to put him away here in round three. Well, talk about taking advantage of an opportunity. Well, I'm sure he has seen Blake just stay on the attack, stay aggressive, because he has his man hurt, and he should stay close. This is one time, Tim, that would agree for uh, Blake to stay inside, stay close to his opponent. His man is dazed, but yet instinct and also experience for Munoz is helping him to survive. Robin Blake with a startling display of punching power against the puncher, Ruben Munoz. And another big right hand land. Robin Blake pounding away Munoz in his corner, having difficulty. And I'll count Munoz now. Watch it ahead. The Blake fans are on their feet. 
final seconds of the third round. That's the end of round number three of a scheduled 10 rounder. Listen to this crowd. One year definitely does better than he's boxing self -bar. Who and knows? That, feels that he's hurt right now, Tim. He's punching with a lot more confidence. Lands a combination, and for the first time, Blake has backed up. You see what happened, Tim? The tables have turned now because Blake stayed in front of him. And Muñoz just unleashed all kinds of combinations on him. Blake is making a mistake. He's giving Munoz momentum and more confidence. Best round so far for Munoz as they come to the end of round five. He can't, Munoz can't get set. You don't see where he reaches in. Solid left hand scored by Munoz. The left jab early in the round by Blake dropped blood from the nose of Munoz. But the big punch scored early in this round was scored by Munoz. Now Blake digs to the body. Two big misses by Blake and Munoz made him pay. Every punch that Blake throws is a home run ball. He just landed a home run ball with that right hand. It's a mistake on both fighters' part because one punch doesn't always do the job. You need to let such and such, such a man up for a series of combinations. He should be given angles, step side to side. Look at the way he threw that right hand. He missed, left himself wide open. He got away with it. Blake appears to me to be tiring some here in the sixth round. Timmy got hit with some good body shots last round. That takes a lot out of him. Yes, it does. He seems less steady, and his mouth is open. He lands a big combination. So he's still got punching power, and he works Munoz. Tim, he's he's staying power Munoz. I mean, he's been hit with some three, four plus combination, and he's still there. Under a minute to go in round six. The only knockdown of the fight was scored by Blake in round three. Are coming a lot faster than uh, moving Munoz. He left himself wide open that time, and Munoz missed the opportunity. As I stated earlier, you know, the fact that Munoz has to take advantage of these opportunities, they come very, very seldom. Under oh. 30 seconds to go in round seven. Coming to the end of the seventh round, round eight, Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Sugar Ray Leonard. Live action from Lubbock, Texas, and Munoz is rocked again by a left hand from Blake. It's unbelievable the punches that Blake is able to release. They're so, they come so natural. You know, eyes reveal a lot, Tim, and the eyes of Robin Blake, the confidence that's there, the intensity, the concentration, on the other hand, Munoz, he has eyes of defeat. It, it's also amazing the physical strength that Robin Blake has for a guy that's built the way he's built. He's almost six foot tall. He only weighs 135 pounds, and he has tremendous physical strength. He manhandles Munoz inside. Well, frustration is definitely in the eyes of Munoz also, although he still has determination to try to win this fight. Urban Munoz. And two victories after his 12-round loss to Roger Mayweather, went on to beat Sammy Serrano for the junior lightweight crown. Got his confidence back, said he was in the best physical and mental shape possible for this cross-state battle. But it's been Blake as we see it. If I was Blake now, with that right, with that left eye, that move you saw me throwing a lot of right hooks. Blake still trying for the knockout here in the ninth round of Top River Munoz. He's hanging in. Munoz is in a little trouble. Tim, the legs are a little shaky right now. Blake continues to pound away, scoring combination. Ten seconds left in round number nine. And the referee indicates it was after the bell. So there is no count. Munoz goes back to his corner. And the referee, James Kiocho, 
Ruling the knockdown occurred after the bell had sounded. Still outwardly calm. Well, you, you should see Blake become very even more aggressive than he has been the first round. Because um, Muriel's still on Queer Street, and he's still a little worn from that, that knockdown. You know, if I was in Blake's corner, I'd say, look, you have to fight one, let's just box this guy. But that Texas pride. He won't kill. Look at him. And he looks so strong. Blake looks very strong. His punches are getting in. Munoz is holding on now. Another big left hand landed by Blake. A wobbly-legged Ruben Munoz fighting on courage now. But that's what you watch on a fight attempt, especially to, 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 to reassure if he's hurt. Watch his legs, his knees. They, they become jello. Many of the Blake fans uh, opposite us are still on their feet cheering their hero. The Ruben Munoz fans, most of them behind us, are quiet now. Well, a cliche, it's been a game display by Munoz, but it has. But he has run into a very talented young lightweight that I don't think Munoz expected to see in here in the person of Robin Blake. I've never seen the combination so accurate thrown by Robin Blake. You know, watch the right hook, and then come back with the left hand. He puts his punches together, so well, and it comes so fast, and so, so many. And that's it, it's been stopped. The victory marked Blake as an up-and-comer. Networks realized that Blake was a marketable commodity with his knockout power inside the ring and the fact that he was a devoted family man outside of it. I try to go to church at every possibility, Blake said. Boxing does cut into my going to church and stuff, but trainer Joe Barrientos gives me the extra time off because we work out every day. My wife Denise's father is a Baptist preacher in Lubbock, and I guess when I met her I started realizing God played a big part in my life. Two months after the grueling bout with Munoz, Blake faced the hard-hitting Tony the Tiger Baltazar. It would be a very uh, effective punch thrown by Tony. On the other hand, Rock, Rock and Robin Blake, he has such great hand speed and power. Baltazar has to be very careful about rushing himself. Well, Blake, with his height and his speed and the fact that he's a southpaw, should, should box. That's been his big fault, they say. He likes to throw punches, and he likes to, he gets hit a little too often. That's what we have to watch for. The combination scored by Balazar. Balazar, the shorter fighter on the white trunks. He's 23 years of age, has had 26 professional bouts. Blake with 20, is 21 years of age. Turned 21 when he defeated Ruben Munoz on CBS a couple of months back. Tim, they're both throwing bombs real early. Anything can happen right here in this first round. Well, this is just about what everybody expected who's been following the careers of these young men. Robin Blake does have the boxing skills, but he likes to punch. And he puts them together. That may be the difference in the fight. Balthazar looks to load up with that one big left hook, and Robin Blake, when he throws him, he throws him in lightning combinations. Ray, what we saw from Balthazar against Howard Davis is very good defensive ability. He blocks punches well with his gloves and elbows. In fact, he can't. That makes for good fights. Another good combination thrown by uh, Robin Blake is that uppercut. He throws that left uppercut and comes back with a good one. There's, there's the combination we were talking about. He puts them together, and Balthazar looks to nail you with one shot. He moved Balazar back. Balazar rallies with a right to the chin of Blake and ties him up. Under 30 seconds to go, round one, scheduled for 10. Step back, please. Get out. The fact, the fact that Blake is a southpaw is, is giving Balthazar a little problems. He's throwing that left hook over a tall guy like Blake's head, messing with it. One of the things I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, Tony Robin Blake is the fact that he can throw so many punches. He puts his combinations together very well with power behind each punch. Also, Ray, he throws his punches correctly. That left hand is as straight as an arrow. Hook is short. Blake with a string of four consecutive knockouts. He had to go 10 before he stopped his Texas rival, Ruben Munoz. I could see that punch coming. Set it up beautiful. Moved his head. Oh, good combination scored by Balazar. Might have Blake in a little trouble on the ropes. He does. It was the left hook that did the damage. Well, the first, the left hook to the body set it up, Ray. Then he came right back up on his shin. Blake moving well. Gets himself back into the middle of the ring, but he's a little glassy-eyed. What, what Tony Balthazar is doing, he's matching 
every punch of Robin Blake. Ray, he's starting to rip that left hook underneath, and Balthazar is cut by the right eye. Disputed. Decision lost to Howard Davis. Under 30 seconds to go in round three. And again, Balazar counterpunching that time, rocked Blake back to the ropes. The right hand scored by Balazar. Blake pecking away with his jab. That cut may not be in a bad spot, but it's bleeding heavily. He's gonna have to do some good corner work. Coming to the end of round number three. I would want to see either fighter lose by a cut, Tim. Balazar needs to do now is cut the ring off. Get his man in the corner. There's that move out to the right by Blake. Balazar pushing Blake back again. But he hasn't been able to get a few together. There's a combination that lands. The crowd getting into he's got him hurt again. What a rally by Balazar. Right hand wobble Blake. Blake in trouble. Balazar not going after him here. Now he takes to the body. Tim, doing a good job, fainting and punching. He's getting hit, thank Final seconds of the round, I think he had me let it all hang out here. Right hand, wobble him again. There's the bell. Ending round number seven, a big one for Balazar. Tony Balazar, as we look into Robin Blake's corner, for the second time as he did in round three wobble Blake, and here in the seventh, he had him in some serious trouble. But Blake would not go down. Joe Barry and his right, trainer, his manager right. Dave Gorman coming in. Yeah, Got to keep Blake calm. He had been in control as we saw it for the last three rounds, four, five, and six. Here. And now Blake down with a straight right hand. Comes over and puts his hand on top of his head. And that they, haven't, just... they haven't counted. No, they called it no knockdown, Tim. I think he was off balance. Well, I thought it was a knockdown, but Davey Pearl did not. There's a solid right hand by Balthazar. He's nailing him out, Tim. Look at this Balthazar kid. They told him to be a man. He sure is a man. And the punch that are doing the damage for Tony Balthazar is the lead-off right to left hook, left hook right hand. But you see, Blake is moving to his right. Now he's going back the wrong way. He moves to his right. He stays away from that punching guard. Balthazar has to come over to his left. But get him in front of him. But you know, Blake has to be careful. I mean, Balthazar stands to be careful because Blake can come back on him. What a fight. Listen to the crowd enjoying it here. Down goes Balazar. A right hand by Balazar. By a Blake. Sent Balazar to the canvas. It came from nowhere. A short right hook. Balazar still hurt. Yes, he is. The punches that brought him down weren't too hard, but he was exhausted from all the effort he put out. Balazar hanging on as Blake throws combination. What a fight. The best thing for Balazar to do now is inside, tie his man up. Get his head back together. Not this kid, Ray. He's looking to knock you out all the time. Balazar tying up. Black backed up Blake with a right hand. Balthazar's legs are strapped now. Balazar off balance. Gloves touch the canvas. No knockdown. Blake continues to throw leather under 30 seconds to go. Well, Blake needs to be careful also. Because Balthazar, he still can hurt you. Greg, you sure you didn't write the script for this fight? <laughs> Seconds of the eighth round. Let these guys speak for themselves. And now it's Blake's eye. Round number nine. Two rounds to go if it goes the distance. Good combination by Blake. And he rocks Belazar into the rope. You saw what happened. Belazar moved straight back. Pounding away Belazar. In difficulty goes down. Belazar looking to the corner. Tony well, Balazar tells Davey Pearl I'm all right. We'll find out if he is. He's got to land a big punch against him. Otherwise, it's over. The weary Tony Balazar. His eyes look a little cloudy here, but he comes forward. What a fight. Swelling around the right eye of Robin Blake. 
did a good job in the corner, Timmy. He came back to the corner with his eye closed. Balthazar. Balthazar. Right and a left combination by Blake. Tim Balthazar is dead tired. That's the difference in the fight right now. Patel was thrown in, and then Dave Pearl stopped the fight. Patel was thrown in. That cannot officially stop a fight, but Davy Pearl went along with it. Denise Blake cheering her husband, who has scored a ninth-round KO of Tony Balazar in one of the most exciting lightweight bouts in the last couple of years. Robin Blake and Tony oh, no. Balazar, two brave warriors at 137 pounds. What a display by unbeaten Robin Blake. When they named him Tony the Tiger, uh, that's a good name for him. He comes at you and he makes you fight. And But uh, I knew I had to fight, and, and you know, I caught a lucky punch. He hit me in the ear in the seventh round, and then he was able to hurt me in the seventh round. And, and I'm just thankful to my Lord and personal Savior that I pulled it out. Blake followed the difficult bout with a victory over Melvin Paul, and this earned him the number one contender spot in the WBA. There it is, Ray. Big left hand scored by Blake. He's got Paul in some trouble. Robin Blake sends him down, and it was really the earlier punch. Blake gets up quickly. It was that left hook that wobbled him. And he just lost his balance from the cumulative effect. Now watch the uppercuts go into action now, Tim. You see now, Blake is doing uppercuts. Big left tennis wobbles. Melvin Paul again. Melvin Paul has never been stopped. Right. Final seconds of round one. He has to stay low now, Tim. Paul does. If he stands straight up, he's going to get nailed. There's the bell ending round number one with Melvin Paul. Down in round one. What he just did. Melvin Paul just did once uh, Blake went down. He put pressure on him. That ties the fighter out. Paul scoring again, two punches in a row. Right hand back from Blake. And a left that troubled Melvin Paul. A straight left hand backed up Paul into the Blake corner, and Paul's holding on. This is a great opportunity for Robin Blake now to get Melvin Paul out of there, but needs some uppercuts. Good right hand by Paul. Yes, it was. A perfect counter. He needs some uppercuts here. And another right hand by Paul. What a fight. And a left hand by Blake that backed up Paul again. Another left hand. And now Paul in trouble. They're giving him a standing eight count here. Joey Curtis giving him a standing eight count. Paul should cover up now, just going to a crowd. And a big left hand by Blake. Knocked into the ropes, Paul saying he's all right, but it's all over. Joey Curtis has stopped the fight in round number six. So Melvin Paul, who had rallied in the fifth round, is stopped here in the sixth by Rock and, Rob Rock and Robin Blake. Your uh, knockout victory, uh, what were your thoughts? Were you surprised when Joey Curtis stepped in? Well, no, not at all. You know, uh, I was on the take. I was going to take control of the fight right then, and, and I felt that I was winning. Uh, what round did we stop in? About seven? I thought I... Sixth round, although it looked to us in the fifth round as though Melvin was coming back some. Well, yeah, I, I felt I had to fight all the way up to that point, but, uh, you know, what can I say? I give the praise and my glory to my Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ, that got me through this fight. And, I don't make any decisions but to get in here and do my job, and that is to win. Well, you did it again. You're unbeaten, and, of course, Ray Mancini is looking in uh, from our studios in New York. I know you've got him in your future. Yes, sir. I'm, you I'm, hope. I'd like to fight Ray Mancini if he give me a shot, win or lose, you know, because uh, that's... My goal is to win the lightweight championship of the world, and if that means going through Ray Mancini, then that's who I'll have to go to. Well, this victory will certainly make you number one ranked by the WBA. Ray Mancini is in our studios. I'm not sure whether we can, uh, can hear him or not. Ray, are, are you... Are you on there? Yes, I can hear you, Tim. Can you hear me? Tim? It, it's a little bit hard to, for us to hear, but uh, Robin Blake, uh, if, uh, if you have the uh, opportunity to, to fight Mancini, but you have to wait for it, will you take uh, another fight in the meantime? It, it would appear you're going to have to stand in line for a while. Well, yes, sir. I have to stay in shape, you know, and I have to keep my composure and everything, so I, I guess I'd have to keep fighting along the road until I do get to Mancini, and until he says yes, and so we sign some papers, and we'll get that opportunity. Okay, well, congratulations to you, Robert. His manager, Dave Gorman, claimed that champion Ray Mancini had turned down a million-dollar offer to fight Blake. However, only three weeks after the win against Paul, Blake was scheduled to face Tyrone Crawley, a rising contender out of Philadelphia. Blake had already fought many tough bouts in a short period of time and had been sparring with larger, 
heavier opponents, which left him feeling burned out. I remember calling my promoter and told him, I am not ready, Blake said. He said, Robin, you will beat him hands down. He's not any good. Probably knocking Blake out. I guess he could do it, but it's very unlikely. Whereas Blake does have the power. I think. Oh, good my right hand, hand. say. Well, don't go by me, folks. Tyrone Crawley just hurt Blake with the right hand. <laughs> This will be an upset if he knocks Blake out, I guarantee you. Working on Blake, who has never lost, has 16 knockouts in 22 fights, and Blake is taking a beating about the head. Crawley's only had three knockouts in 14 fights. Well, Tyrone Crawley heard me, that's for sure. He unloaded with a very good right hand. All of those shots thrown by Blake have missed. That's picked off on the glove. Remember what Blake said in our little profile? I can't let Crawley stand in my way. There's another right to the head thrown by Crawley. There's another right. Blake is in trouble, not as far as being hurt is concerned, but in this fight through the sixth round. Crawley is dominating him in this round. And that's it. And look at Blake. He goes over and hugs Crawley, who throws his hands high in the air. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by unanimous decision, Paul Crowley. The bout was the classic one fight too many. The loss resulted in the cancellation of the million dollar payday that was supposed to come from the fight against Ray Mancini. I don't want to make any excuses, but I wasn't ready to fight Tyrone Crowley and I lost, Blake said. After that, my career was like a roller coaster. I was in and out of the rankings. I knew that everything has to click and be right when you go into the ring, and if it doesn't, you have already lost. Despite facing criticism for scheduling too many fights for Blake in a short period, manager Gorman continued to push his fighter. Only three months after Blake's disappointing loss to Crawley, he was put in against another top contender in Harry Arroyo. Despite coming on strong in the late rounds, Blake once again lost the decision, although he did earn a career-high purse of $100,000. After these consecutive defeats, Blake returned to the ring only two months later. He struggled in bouts against club fighters Thomas Baker and Edwin Charette, but managed to defeat Adolfo Medell in February of 1985. A rematch with the now IBF lightweight champion Harry Arroyo was scheduled, but a hand injury forced Blake to withdraw. Jimmy Paul stepped in, defeated Arroyo, and then defended his title against Blake in June of 1985. decided to take a fight out of him. He wants a war, and that's what he's going to get from Jimmy. Blake's best punch is an attic to the body. Paul, oh, so good defensively at stopping the headshot, but Blake was landing to the body. I like, what I like about Jimmy Paul, he keeps his eyes on his man. Concentration is the key here. Notice what he did for his left foot to his body. Blake staying there flat-footed, landing to the body. Now he landed a right hand. Hurt Jimmy Paul with that. Now, Blake has to be extra careful here because those shots are being caught on the arm and glove of Jimmy Paul. So now what could possibly happen, he could get arm weary and Paul could come back. That's right, Ray. Blake is expending a lot of energy. Jimmy Paul's just nice, very, very cool blocking those punches. Block one with his chin, but he's blocking most of the punches. Under a minute to go in round five. And now we see that attitude of uh, Robin Blake. He wants to go to war now. Under the 32nd mark. He's standing right, right down the pipe from the champion Paul. And a sharp left hook. He's put both feet together with pools he's hurt. Well, Blake forgot all about the free fight strategy this round. Changed everything. This has been a pattern, even in winning effort for Blake. Followed left jab by the champion. Combination back from Blake. Under a minute remaining in the ninth round. Solid right by Paul. And why did that happen? Because Blake forgot and he was standing still. And you'll notice every time that Blake stands directly in front of Paul, Paul's going to land with that, that right hand. He started to drop, drop his uh, right hand also, so left hook might fall. There it is. Oh, let's 
Turner with a big left hook. There's a right down the pipe. That staggered him again. And the bell ending round number nine with Blake on his feet. And gets to the corner, but he is in difficulty now. We are into round number 12. Tim Ryan with Joe Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Jimmy Powell with a left hook. Cut Blake. And the knockdown count being administered. They did rule it a knockdown. Paul was trying to get close to Blake to finish him off. And so in that case there, the knockdown count actually helped Blake. But he is in difficulty. The opening seconds of round number 12. Paul is putting everything behind each punch. And despite the fact he's putting everything behind him, Ray, they're still very, very short punches. A lot of power. Good oh, a big right hand. What a right hand, and Robin Blake is still standing. Blake definitely slowed down somewhat by those two shots early in this 12th round. Still a little unsteady on his legs, trying to get some bounce underneath him. Paul, seeing that, starts to press. Blake leaving himself wide open. Wide open, yes he is. And he takes two shots down the pipe to the champion. Paul just picking his way now. If I want to be respected for his sake, and it won't be for taking a punch. Blake is right directly in front of Jimmy Paul. I'm not sure he can move now though, Ray. I think his legs just aren't going to carry him. Carry him wide. He's going to get the opening and sure enough he does. At first, you saw confidence in the face of Robin Blake, and now you see just the opposite because he's been hammered by Jimmy Paul. Overhand right landed by Paul. There's a left hook getting through, and another left hook. He's got Blake in the red corner again. He's ready to go, Tim. Now, observe his legs. He knows there's not that much springs in his leg. Solid throw roundhouse punches. Basically, now he's on instinct. Has so much courage, like if he gets knocked down, he'll be punching on the way down. In the 14th round, he has that head right in front of Jimmy Paul now, just on cuts. Oh. again. Left hook by the champion. Paul support on him. He never does. That's one of his uh, failings. The fact, if even after he hurts you, he's not a good finisher. He has to finish you with the one big shot, or two or three. Forcing Blake backwards. Robin Blake continues to throw punches, but they're just being squandered aside by Paul, having no effect. Under a minute to go in the 14th round. Paul looks as fresh as if it was the first round. Another big right hand by Jimmy Paul. Joey Curtis is definitely keeping a close eye on Blake because he knows he's getting hit by some big punches. Bounce from the legs of Robin Blake. There is a big right hand. He's ready to go. Right? Another right hand. Jimmy Paul turned it into target practice here now. Pulling Blake around. Blake in difficulty. Joey Curtis races in and that'll be it. It's all over. Jimmy Paul with a 14th round stoppage has retained his IBF lightweight title. And Joey Curtis over there saying to Robin Blake, Sorry, son, but you just, you just had nothing left there. Blake held back tears after the defeat. I tried, and that's the bottom line, Blake said. I hurt inside, but I got to accept that I lost. Jimmy Paul beat my best because I was at my best, and I tried everything I had, but it just wasn't good enough. Eight months after his fight against Jimmy Paul, Blake faced off against Olympic gold medalist Meldrick Taylor, but lost the decision. As a result, both fans and promoters now started to view Blake as an opponent rather than a serious contender, which angered his manager Gorman. You don't call Robin Blake an opponent, Gorman said, and I don't even like to hear that mentioned. If it ever got to that point, I won't let him fight. But Blake decided to retire from boxing shortly after the Taylor defeat. He tried his hand at various odd jobs, such as working as an independent carpet cleaner. However, after 15 months, he had a change of heart and decided to make a comeback to the sport. This go-around, he decided to switch trainers, moving on from Joe Barrientos to Arturo Perez. Blake believed that Barrientos had trained him to be a flat-footed power puncher with little emphasis on defense. Joe was a good conditioning coach, Blake said, but me getting hit by right hands and left hooks, there's got to be something to it. 
I was training to be powerful. I want to be a boxer and not a target. That's what I was at the end, an opponent for those guys. Meanwhile, Barrientes believed that the emphasis on offense was necessary, especially after Blake's popularity surged following his victory over Munoz. He got to be a slugger from then on, Barrientes said. And you know, a lot of people don't like to see a boxer, a runner. If we don't see blood, we don't like the fight. I was trying to help him make some money, so maybe I got too confident in Robin that he could knock anyone out. Maybe it was my fault. If I've done that, I'm sorry. Despite the changes in his training and management, Blake's career took a turn for the worse in 1988 when he moved up to the junior welterweight division. He was defeated by Harold Brazier, Jesse Lopez, and Victor Davis. Following the loss to Davis, Blake took off a year from the ring. He found employment as a patrol officer for a security service in Fort Worth. He stated that he, quote, fell in love with that type of work, despite the marginal pay. He made another comeback under the management of his father, Roger, but again, it was short-lived. Blake suffered an eight-round stoppage defeat to Nika Kamalo, which effectively ended his boxing career. He then traded in his gloves and pink trunks for a police badge as he joined the academy at South Plains College, before eventually becoming an officer with the Odessa Police Department. I boxed because I loved it and enjoyed it, Blake said. As soon as I got my license to be a cop, I put those gloves in a box, and they've been there ever since. In 2007, Blake's son Brandon followed in his footsteps, not as a boxer, but as a policeman, and they formed a father-son duo at the Odessa Police Department. I used to wait up on him and hear all the stories he had to tell, Brandon said. It's what gave me the interest. After 17 years as an officer, Blake retired from the Odessa Police in 2013, and joined the police force in Eastland. However, the stay in Eastland was short-lived, and Blake returned to Odessa in 2014 to work as an officer in the hospital system, where he said he is comfortable and happy.